The Holy Land is the last poetry collection by Maurice Riordan, who got himself my attention when he became the new editor of uh, Poetry Reviews. And uh, since the publishers Faber and Faber can't uh, really afford to send the likes of us review copies, they're a small group, so we do understand. A few months ago, I went to the closest Walterstones and uh, picked up the book myself. And, well, what is it like? The Holy Land is divided in three parts, all of which deal with uh, the poet's recollections of his past in the Irish countryside. The second part is... Uh, the longest and most important and the one that will really make or break the book for you. It's composed of these uh, prose poems in which uh, the poet's father and his friends are depicted in episodes of their everyday life in the countryside. Does it work? The concern that is at the heart of the Holy Land is the relationship between personal past and mythology. What Jordan does in the first part of his book is to repeatedly connect Christian themes and symbols to episodes from his own personal memory. His uh, use of form in the second part of the book also throws back to classical modes of writing so that the poet's private mythology is uh, collapsed together with uh, greater mythologies, say the mythology of religion or of classicism, the Greeks and the Romans. The writing, on the whole, is of a high standard. Riordan makes poems the way that some pubs make hamburgers. They have been in the business long enough that they know what you like. And by and large, he delivers. His uh, poems are never cliched, they are never sentimental, and they are never boring. This is a poet who is uh, both talented and, of course, mature. There is very much in this collection that can be enjoyed. While I appreciate the attempt at making something different from uh, most of the poetry that is out there, the second part of the book, the prose poems about this countryside community, really did not convince me. The writing is just too episodic to actually build a real relationship with any of the characters. And uh, as I often find to be the case with prose poems, the language is not very striking. More importantly, for a collection that wants to be so grounded in the poet's real past, the classical style is neither realistic nor particularly poetic. In fact, it just seems a bit ridiculous. Even a sentence as simple as uh, Tell us, Harry, what you think seems a bit too solemn and grave. You can almost hear an archaic O oh, just before the name. Tell us, O oh, Harry what you think. What I mean is that when you hear farmers sounding like fucking Yoda all the time, you begin to lose touch with them. They no longer sound real or genuine. They remind me of the dialogue in The Lord of the Rings, which I suppose makes sense when you consider that typing Maurice Riordan in Google Images conjures pictures of a guy who looks like Gandalf's younger brother. Essentially, The Holy Land is an interesting and carefully constructed collection, but it was a real problem for me that the most important section also seemed the weakest. Riordan's uh, conclusion, as I read it, is that the past becomes the Holy Land when it is illuminated by the light of mythology. This is expressed rather subtly and very nicely, I think, in the closing poem of the book, a villanelle called The January Bird. One of the two recurring lines goes, There must be some advantage 
to the light. Of course, light here could mean almost anything, but I think that's the point. Light is the signifier that allows for all signifiers. It is the symbol of symbolic transmission. That is how it illuminates the darkness of the past, thanks to the language and the metaphor of myth. At the same time, that final poem also includes a line as tautological as You are you, I mouth to my shadow skin, though you are me, assuming weight and mass. You are you, and you are me. Where have I heard this use of pronouns before? Yes, and also... Everyone's like, Cody's this, Cody's that, Cody's me, bro. Let me be me. Yeah, you're not in good company, are you? And uh, therein lies the problem. At times, this book feels more like the poet talking to himself, trying to reassert his Irishness and his ground roots face to the English academic lifestyle that he is leading now. And this childish identity crisis really has no place in a collection that is otherwise so mature and sometimes quite beautiful.